Welcome back to Hillbilly Storytime, Pintest Fails. My name is Adam, and I will be your Hillbilly Storyteller today. As always, the stories are true, just the names have been changed to protect the innocent and the guilty's egos. For this very first episode, I've decided to pick a nice little story here about external pen test. Let's go ahead and jump into this, shall we? One day, Chief Pentester Us received a contract from a company that's called them Acme. Acme had requested that Chief Pentester Us perform an external penetration test on their internet facing systems. Well, based on the size and scope, Chief Pentester Us chose that they needed three different consultants to work on this. It's going to be your three heroes, of course Charles Ray, Billy Bob, and John Boy. Charles Ray, being the more senior, took the uh, role of uh, team lead on this. And knowing what he should do doesn't always do that, but he knew he should have done a kickoff call with the customer to verify and double check and what have you there. But he had a nice looking scoping document in front of him that had all of the targets and contact information and feeling lazy or just bewildered or whatever the case is, he decided to forgo the call this time and just get started with the engagement. So he went over to the intern, handed him the scoping doc and said, Get started on the initial scans. Let me know when you're done. So, John Boy took the uh, target uh, scope, excuse me, and he went in and he started typing in the ranges, got them in, hit go. Well, he was a little sloppy when he was typing them in, made a couple of typos. One in particular was the most important. When he was typing in one of the ranges, he left off a character or a digit off of one of the cider ranges. So instead of it being a slash 24 cider range, it was a slash 2 cider range. Slight difference in scope there. So as he was doing his other work, he happened to glance over periodically to see what was going on and noticed that it was taking way too long. He looked at it a little more intently and realized what had happened. He quickly stopped the scan, uh, went in, cleared it all out. Um, trying to cover up his tracks a little bit there, and then he said, all right, fine, I'm just going to take the scoping document as it is and use that. So he opened up his editor, copy and pasted straight out of the scoping document into the um, scanning tool, and hit go. Well, this would have been fine had Charles Ray not skimped on his duties at the beginning, because one of the ranges that was in this uh, scoping document was actually incorrect the customer had transposed a digit or two in one of the ranges. It was still a valid IP range, just not valid for this customer. It turns out that this IP range happened to be for a school district. A school district with a lot of security cameras. Charles Ray, John Boy, and uh, Billy Bob all, after the initial scans were done, joined in to work on the uh, actual assessment now. So they started hammering away at all the different IPs and services and ports and what have you. And they found a lot of good findings. It just happened that some of these happened to be on the school district. Somewhere along the lines, um, Billy Bob says, you know what, this doesn't look right. I don't think your customer is a school. So quick call with the customer, found out that one of the IP ranges was in fact incorrect. So they corrected that. Uh, re-ran the scans against that one, continued pen testing it until everybody was happy with the results. Well, this waste of time here is indicative of a lot of issues that they've been having during this engagement, all relating around wasting time. First, of course, was, as we just mentioned, scanning the wrong IPs because of not verification. Another one was the Team members kept scanning the same systems at the same time, not collaborating with each other, not coordinating anything of that nature, so there was a lot of duplicated effort in there. Finally, when they would find a uh, vulnerability or an issue, they didn't take screenshots, they didn't capture any of the logs, they didn't do any of this. Okay, you don't have to. It just saves a lot of extra time when you're doing the reporting, so you don't have to go back and recreate those, thus wasting time. So finally, all the testing was done, all the inefficiencies were out of the way, and they were done. So the engagement wasn't pretty, it wasn't efficient, but it was done. So they took the final report, sent it off to the customer. And this is where the final uh, mistake comes in. The team members didn't notice it, 
Peer review didn't notice it. Tech review didn't notice it. No one noticed it, except for the customer. The customer opens the document. First thing they see, customer name, it's incorrect. It's not them. Why this happened? Not really sure. Maybe copy and paste error, something of that nature. Regardless, it did happen. Well, this resulted in a nice, long, and lengthy, and heated call between Acme, the team members, and Chief Fantastic RS Senior Management to figure out what had happened, how this can be corrected, and if everything was correct. Well, ultimately everybody was happy, went on their way, customer was somewhat satisfied, well at least for the price they paid, with this being Chief Fantastic RS, probably didn't pay that much. Either way, everything was happy and done. I know this was a shorter story today, but uh, this is probably about the length that we're going to be shooting for for most of these. So, as always, if you enjoyed this story, please hit the like button. If you want to be updated to when new, when new versions of these stories come out or new stories come out, please hit the subscribe button. Please feel free to leave any feedback, comments, whatever in this comment section below. And as always, thank you very much and have a great day.